Hey there, awesome art kiddos. How are you doing today? Today I'd like to show you how to make a little basket. Check this out. This is just a little um, shallow basket that I made out of cardboard and some yarn and a little bit of glue. So I'm gonna get the supplies together to show you how to weave a small basket. Let's get started. For today's project, you're gonna want some cardboard. Now this could just be any kind of box that you might have lying around the house, cereal box, Amazon box, you know, those kinds of boxes. I've got some yarn. I have two objects for tracing. One is a larger bowl that can be the bigger circle. And then I have one of my glasses that's gonna be a center circle. I also have some glue. If you're gonna be using glue today, uh, I really do recommend using tacky glue or the thicker kind of glue if you've got it. And of course, I need some scissors, pencil or Sharpie, and Darth Vader. Let's go ahead and get started. I wanna make a little circle shallow basket, so I'm going to need to trace some circles. I'm gonna take my piece of cardboard and I'm gonna lay it flat so I can put a bowl on top of it. Now I picked the biggest bowl I could fit on this square of paper. You um, go ahead and pick whatever bowl or circle object you have. I'm gonna give it a nice trace with my pencil so that I have a nice big circle. Then I'm gonna grab a glass. I just had a glass on hand that made a nice little circle center. I'm gonna trace it and it's gonna look like a donut. Now I'm gonna grab a Sharpie to make some marks. I'm going to start by making one mark at the top and then straight across, I'm going to actually make two marks at the bottom. There's a reason for this. Now I'm going to put a mark on each side and then another mark on each side, and then one more mark on each side. I'm trying to space them apart. The reason that I did two marks on the bottom so is that I can wind up with an odd number of spaces. You can see I'm counting around and I have nine marks. Now I'm going to cut my circle out. As I'm cutting my circle, I'm going to try and be very careful to not cut away my marks. As a matter of fact, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably could have made my marks after I cut my circle, but oh well, I've already started. So I'm just gonna cut carefully around to get my circle complete. Now I'm going to grab my scissors and starting at each mark, cut straight across from the mark to the center circle. So the center circle is kind of like my no cut zone. That will become the bottom of my basket. I'm just going to keep cutting all the way around now. Once I've completed cutting all the way around my circle, I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to make each of those little cuts wider. The way I'm going to do this is just by cutting a little piece of each cardboard flap away so that those spaces become a little bit wider and easier for me to get my string over and under in a moment. Yay, my weaving template is complete. Technically, my cardboard is my weaving loom. What I'm going to do now is take one end of my yarn around one flap, and then I'm going to tie a little double knot. It's kind of like tying a shoestring, just doing it twice. Once I have my knot tied, then I can trim that excess yarn off so that I'm ready to begin weaving. Here comes the weaving process. You always want your yarn to go in a pattern, ABAB -A -B pattern. 
So if you'll notice, I'm going in front of a flap, pulling the yarn behind a flap. In front, behind, in front, and then behind again. And you'll see eventually, I'm showing yarn all the way around my little circle center. I'm going to continue this pattern in front, behind, in front, behind, until all of my little flaps are filled with rows and rows of yarn. Once you've practiced in front and behind, you'll start to find your weaving groove. What that means is you'll figure out the best way for you to hold your loom and move the yarn around in front and behind of the flaps. Some people find it comfortable to hold their loom in the air so that they could turn the circle with one hand and pull the yarn with the others. Some people might find it more comfortable to set their loom on the table and continue weaving that way by spinning the cardboard on the table. Hey, it looks like I found my groove. I know this because I'm starting to go a little bit faster. You go at your own pace, your own speed that you're comfortable with. Now that I'm getting lots and lots of rows of yarn, I'm noticing that the little flaps I'm weaving in front and behind of are starting to push up or stand up a little bit. I can encourage that as I weave by squeezing the loom a bit and also by how hard you're pulling. Now don't pull too hard, you don't wanna break it. If you run out of yarn and you need to hook some more yarn on, leave yourself a nice little tail, add your second piece of yarn next to it, form a loop and send the two ends through the loop and pull. That'll make a nice knot. Need to see that again? I'm taking my first yarn that's from the loom, putting my second piece of yarn next to it. I'm going to try and form this into a loop. If you need your parents to help you, just ask. But if you can do it on your own, it's a great thing to learn. Now that I have my loop, I can send those two ends through the loop, pull my yarn, and I got a knot. Then I can grab my scissors and just trim that excess off. Yay, now I can just start weaving again. Hey, don't worry about that little knot. You might see it, you might not see it. Ha <laughs> ha, not, not. Don't worry about that, just let it stay right there. It's not gonna be a big deal. Okay, all of the little flaps I've woven in front of and behind have filled up and I just can't do any more. So I'm cutting my yarn so that I can tuck that very little loose end down behind one row of yarn on a flap. You can do it with your finger, you can do it with a pencil or some kind of pointy object. Sometimes I find my finger can really help me get it started and then the pencil can shove that little piece of yarn down in there. That's going to hold it nice and tight. If you want to stop there, that's a perfect little bowl as it is. If you don't like the look of the cardboard circle that's in the bottom of your bowl, you've got some options. My first option would be to just take a marker. Then I could outline that circle down in the middle, and fill it in with a color. I'm doing a solid color red. You could certainly make it a rainbow or any other design that you think would look really good in your bowl. Perfect. 
I could also choose to take a piece of color paper and I could cut a circle. I'm just guessing the size here, guys. It might fit perfect, it might not. And that's okay. That yeah, looks pretty good. And then I'll need to glue that down. Now, of course, if you're worried about cutting a really good circle, you can always grab that object that you traced the circle for the center of your ball with, and you could use that to cut your paper out. Now, here's the fancy version. And this is a little messy and takes a little time, but I find it to be very pretty and I like the way it looks. I'm squeezing some tacky glue and I like tacky glue because it's nice and thick. It doesn't dry super fast. I'm going to spread it around my fingers. So, ooh, it feels so gushy. Making sure I fill that whole circle with a layer of tacky glue. Wow, that was pretty thick. You might not need that much or hey, if you got it, have fun. Uh, gotta wipe my finger off. Now that my finger's wiped off, I'm ready to take my yarn, kind of ball it up a little bit, and stick that little ball in the middle of the glue, and then I'm going to start wrapping the yarn around and around and around itself to fill up the bottom of my circle. Now guys, this can be messy, and you might have to stop and try again or pull some yarn up to relay it. You might get glue on your fingers and need to pause and wipe your fingers on a dry paper towel. The glue is not going to dry so fast that you can't take your time with this. So once you do this, just keep wrapping around and around until the bottom is full. What do you think of the basket? Look. Oh, it's the perfect place for you to get a little cookie. And she enjoys it very much. Hey, would you like another one? 